So one of the things that we're going to talk about very specifically today, and I was, I had a really good time when we got to hang out a little bit in New Jersey and uh, I was able to share an Uber with Joy and I got to pick her brain a little bit about some of the things that she's seeing that people are facing. And and as someone in toys, it was, um, it was really interesting that there's a law called Reese's law, right? that uh, has to do with basically button batteries. Now, a lot of products use these button batteries. They're shipped with these button batteries. And it's named after a poor child that swallowed one and I think passed away, uh, is my understanding. Now, this is a very dangerous thing. It looks harmless and it looks like it could be something that can be eaten or swallowed or consumed. And the reality is that um, if that's too easy to get to, uh, and then your product is deemed unsafe and it can really shut you down. So, Joy, what is the regulation that was passed by the government that was not communicated to sellers properly? And then uh, tell us a little bit about the background here and, and what, how, do, how do sellers who are planning on selling something with a button battery, how do we make sure that we're in compliance? So there's a few things. There's three prongs to Reese's Law, and they staged the rollout of them. And Amazon did not do a great job of communicating all three prongs and and what they really meant, because they really just said coin and button batteries. And that's what everybody thinks of it. But Reese's Law defines it as any battery that has a risk of being ingested. So anything that you could potentially swallow, right? So it's not limited to batteries that have traditionally been marketed as button or coin batteries. There's a lot of different types of batteries that you could swallow. So the, and, I'm, and I have it here so I can read it to you exactly. It says a, it's not just about the battery. It also applies to consumer products containing button cell or batteries. It's a consumer product that has or is designed to use. Now, this is very important. It's designed to use one or more of those batteries whether those batteries are intended to be replaced by the consumer or included with the product or sold separately. And I know we talked about this in the car. Yeah, I think that that's, that's one of the most important things because you think you're safe just because you're not shipping it with the battery because there was a testing for the battery, which was one of the phases of this. You had to get your battery certified and tested separately as, as a, a different inspection, or at least we did with our toys. But if you're like, hey, I'm not shipping the battery so I can continue just to sell my product. If you're not securing that battery properly with your product, then you're immediately out of compliance. So that's what that's telling me. So that is that plays into the second is the battery compartment requirement. It requires a tool like a screwdriver or two independent and simultaneous movements to open it. The kind that you can open by holding it with a coin that you have to turn. Those are the kinds of compartments that are now required and you are testing for them is it's not enough to have your battery tested. It's not enough to have your product tested. That testing has to address the battery compartment. So where your testing would have pictures, it has to show, it has to talk about, it has to, you know, include verbiage that it is compliant. Now, if you are a toy product producer and your product is already for children under 14 and it is pro- and it is compliant with the toy standard and zinc air cell, button cell or coin batteries, it is exempt from those requirements for the compliance testing, okay? It is not exempt from the third part, which just kicked in um, at the end of September. Products manufactured or imported after September 21st. But Amazon seems to be enforcing this very broadly. They're not going to get into the minutia of when your product was manufactured. That's Amazon style. So they're applying it to products that were previously manufactured. So just be aware of that. But now this is the third prong, which is your overall product has to bear a warning. If practical, the product itself has to contain a warning. And the outside of the packaging, there are specific requirements, size of the text, the color of the text, the placement, and what it has to say. And that also includes your instructions and manuals. So it's a lot more than what Amazon put out in their notices. Their notices just made sellers think they just applied if you were selling batteries. And a lot of sellers found out that wasn't true. I always use the example of a meat thermometer is a good one. Um, you know, that contains a battery small enough to be ingested. You have to be able to open that with a device or two hands. That's awesome. 
So what's this third part that's coming out now that, you know, now they're talking about that you have to be in compliance with that was not communicated? That's the packaging requirement, the packaging labeling requirement that you are packaging. So in other words, your box, if you have a toy, right, and it has to bear these warnings about the batteries. Um, it's very specific. You know, uh, the size of the text has to be sufficient and legible and prominent. The warning must contrast with the background to ensure it's easily readable. In other words, it can be black text on a white background, white text on a black background. It's all very specific. It must be in a primary display panel of the product's packaging where it's visible to the consumer at the time of purchase. Now, what does that mean for Amazon sellers? This trips up sellers in a number of ways. That means your product images on Amazon should have a picture of that panel warning because when they're buying it on Amazon, that's the time of purchase, not when it shows up at their house. That's interesting. And so we get into this a lot where you know we teach people how to use the main packaging in their main images and in their content because it's giftable or whatever. But very often we don't talk about these additional warnings that should be visible. Now it could be on the back or the reverse. So if I'm showing the front of my box and with my product in front of it, you know, and I want to put text and make it marketable and show that it's giftable, I don't necessarily need to put the warning on the front of the box where it's not supposed to be anyway, right? But if I had packaging of my box in three three directions, like wherever it was actually supposed to be, it better be on there in, if I'm going to use it on my listing. This is what I'm hearing you say. Yes. And it also says that accompanying instructions or user manual, manuals must include all relevant warnings, ensuring the consumer is informed throughout the product's life cycle. So this is a very complex area. And it's one so what that is the Amazon... striker? What is the what is the uh, what is so what is Amazon doing here at this point, and and how have you helped sellers maybe get their account back? I mean, to me, this like without being an expert like you guys are, but just from being around for so many years, my thinking would be like immediate withdrawal of all the inventory with a plan of action around we're going to either remedy or destroy this inventory, and then that might allow. Is, this, is it an account-wide suspension or are they just shutting down this one listing? Like, um, what are you guys saying? This portion of it is is what it's at the warning level. People who refuse to become compliant, your listing will be taken down. Um, so right now, especially so it's crazy on the that they're even portion. they're even allowing them to continue to sell through the inventory or? Um, there is usually a compliance warning date. You'll get an email telling you that you have a compliance requirement and you go and you look and it says, by this date, you must provide us the documentation. And they really do mean that date. If you do not have it on by that date, they will take your ASIN down on that date. And it's not even a dog pitch. It's like gone. It's nuked, right? And this is an area where Amazon doesn't really, um, you know, they shoot first, right? And and widely. And I don't expect that they're going to get into, it. It, it's too soon to say because it's just started. But I don't think they're, like many things, they're going to get into the minutia, even if you can prove your manufacturing date is before September 21st. Um, certainly, if you were innocent in that situation and you could prove it, and that's what, but this is the sticky wicket with Amazon. We hear this all the time. Sellers will say, but it's legal. That's the law. This is where Amazon policy and the law intersect. And Amazon policy will override the law every time. It's their. They're their own country. They make the rules. And so for their ease, what I assume will happen is that they're going to just choose that September 21st date who say, this is the enforcement date under our policy, because they can make stronger policies than the law. Right. Well, it's their ball, their field, and uh, and their bat. And so whatever they say goes is is kind of the way we have to treat it as sellers. Okay. So... It is, uh, it is nuked and you get this thing taken down. Your account is okay, but then you need to take action. So you withdraw this stuff and then you have to reapply. How do you get this strike off or how serious is this? Um, what, what are you guys doing to remedy it? It's really just, um, at this point, it's really just a product takedown, right? We're not seeing, now, if you go create a new ASIN, call it back, create a new ASIN, try to put it back up until they catch you again. Those are the kinds of things, and those are the kinds of things sellers do and shouldn't. 
But those are the kinds of things, those repeat violations that will end up with an account suspension. But it's really a run up to a date that they will say to you, this is the date you have to show us the testing. Now, if after that date comes along and you then get your testing and you can prove to Amazon, there's still an appeal path to get it back up. So in other words, if you're compliant with the law, but you don't have any testing that proves it, you get your testing after that date, generally you can get by. But where Amazon gets funny about compliance testing is there's a lot of ways in which they say, you were supposed to have this testing before the, this date. Show us the testing that was before that date. It's kind of a 50-50 with how hard they push back on them. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So... Outside of this Reese's law, which is extremely serious, um, the safety of children is always, you know, priority to us as, as toy sellers. And I think that all of us as sellers need to get in the right mindset of we're not extracting as much profit as possible from Amazon. We're, we're, we're running a real business and real people are buying our goods and we need to make sure that we're, we're doing the right thing. 